that never shall run Just want to say a pleasant good night, good night, good night to each and every one of you. We just want to thank God for today. We just want to give him thanks for his son, Jesus Christ. We just want to give him thanks for bringing us thus safe, uh, bringing us safe thus far, sparing our life uh, and gathering us as one family. 
to lift up his name, praise his name, glorify his name, give him honor and glory. We thank you, Lord, for all that you have been doing in our lives. Just want to say a pleasant good evening to each and every one of you. You're listening in to Cedar Gospel Radio. 88.9 on the FM band. Good evening to you. Good evening to all of you on the internet. Good evening. Hey, a pleasant good evening to you by way of the cell phone. My God, he is real. He is just awesome. We can't stop giving him thanks. We bless his holy name. We praise his name. As we're about to start the program, let us always, as usual, go into our little prayers. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you once more, glorifying your name, praising your name, thanking you for all you have done in our life. Heavenly Father, continue to bless us, lead us, guide us, direct us. Because we cannot do this alone. Father, bless our children. Bless our listeners. Guide and protect them wherever they are. They are on the work. They are on the road. They are at home. Spread your love right across dear Lord. And as we are about to start this program, Lord, you be the leader. Direct us. Let self decrease and you increase. We ask of this in no other name but Jesus. And we want to say thank you, dear Lord. I want to say a pleasant good night to you, Minister Stubbs. And I trust that you are feeling a lot better tonight. Tonight, I hope you're feeling a lot better. We heard that you're not feeling so well, so trust that the Lord is working upon you his servant you know as he said he never leave us nor forsake us so i trust that you're feeling a little better tonight or much better tonight so as you relax in your bed maybe listening into brother paul i just want you to enjoy the rest of the program yes and uh, i will be playing a song for you in a short while this is our thank you song we thank Thee yes. each morning for a newborn day Where we may work the fields of new mown hay We thank Thee for the sunshine and the air that we breathe, O oh Lord We thank Thee Thank Thee for the rivers that run all day for the little birds that sing along the way Thank Thee for the trees and the deep blue sea Oh Lord, we thank Thee Oh yes, we thank Thee, Lord, for every flower that blooms Birds that sing, fish that swim, and the light of the moon we thank Thee every day as we kneel and pray That we were born with eyes to see these things Thank Thee for the fields where the clover is grown Thank Thee for the pastures where cattle may roam Thank Thee for Thy love so pure that sing, fish that swim, and the light of the moon. We thank Thee every day as we kneel and pray that we were born with eyes to see these things. Yes, we thank Thee for the fields where the clothes grow. Thank Thee for 
the pastures where cattle may roam. Thank thee for thy love so pure and so free, O Lord. We thank thee. Yes, 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 we thank thee. We thank you, Lord. just want to say pleasant good evening to you over there in Brooklyn by way of KNL Radio. Good evening to you. Good evening to you, Brother Lennox. Good evening to you, sir. I want to say good night to you, Brother Ricardo. Good evening to you, sir. to reap it's time to reap the harvest you have sown my God thank you Jesus Son, go bring my children home. It's time for you to go and reap that harvest. Harvest is ripe. Come on now. Thank you, Jesus. Minister Stubbs, this one is going out to you, sir.
to you, you're live on the air. Yes, off the air, please. Yes, but it is our worship that heals where those shackles were. Let's declare it together. Thank you for the healing. And this one is going out to you, Minister Stubb. Wishing you a speedy recovery. Listen, good night to you, Sister Bobs. Good night to you, my sister. Shout out to all of you who are in the chat room.
for every malady, every sickness and disease. There are many of you who have been searching for relief from your pain in all of the wrong places. But the Father gives the promise to us in Malachi chapter 4 and verse 2, But unto you that reverence my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings. Wings denote protection, covering, and shelter. And right now in the shelter and the safety of his presence, lift your hands, lift your voice, declare that he is good. Lift your worship. Come on, let him minister to you in those areas that have become too tender to touch. It is our praise that destroys the shackles, yes, but it is our worship that heals where those shackles were. Let's declare it together. Thank you for the healing. Hey, 
right beer man, yeah, yeah, he's a riot, you know. Any way you want, take it, you know. He's just a riot, beer man. Thank you for the healing, God. Thank you for the healing, Lord. Because you're good and you're merciful. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, God. Once more, pleasant good night to all our listeners, wherever you are. Yes, you are. Come on, declare I hope you're warm coming. and comfortable. And you are not out in that mess. Oh, he's gone. If it's necessary for you to be out there, well. Thank you, son. We bless you. Thank you for being so. Pleasant good night to those of you who are on your way to the work. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Somebody lift your hands as we celebrate the greatness of our God. He's great and he's greatly to be praised. This, our God is awesome. My God is awesome. He can move mountains. He can move mountains. Keep me in the valley. Keep me in the valley. Hide me from the rain. Hide me from the rain. Come on, our God is awesome. My God is awesome. He heals me when I'm broken. Heals me when I'm broken. Strength where I've been weak. Forever he'll reign. Say, my God is awesome. My God is awesome. He can move mountains. He can move mountains. Keep me in the valley. Keep me in the valley. Hide me from the rain. Hide me from the rain. My God is awesome. My God is awesome. He heals me when I'm broken. Heals me when I'm broken. Strength where I've been weak. Strength where I've been weak. Forever he'll reign. One of you believe and lift your voice and say, My God is awesome. Come on, if you know it's awesome, say, it. Awesome. Come on and lift your voice. Awesome. 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 My God. My God is awesome. Come on and testify. Awesome. Awesome. If you believe it, say, it. Awesome. Come on and say it. Think about it, Savior of the whole world, giver of salvation, by his stripes, I'm here, my God is awesome, today I am forgiven, his grace is why I'm living, somebody ought to praise his holy name, come on and testify if you know he's awesome, say it.
Yes, Lord, I'm lost without you. My God. I want to say present good night to you. Sister Mark and your niece, good night to you. Sister Angels, good night to you. Sister Yuna. NTT. that you're nothing without him and you'd be lost. And Sister Yuna again. Lift your hands right now. Listen, good night to you. Sister Lee, good night to you. Come on, he's given us hey, the Sister offering. Gloria, the good night. Of God, as he did Adam in Genesis. He, this is the oh, end. Come on, just breathe in now. Breathe in the air. Listen, good night to our listeners over there. KNL Radio. Good night to all our listeners over there in Brooklyn by way of KNL Radio. This is the air I breathe. Come on, come on, come on. You drop out, group. I want to hear the. Hey, and don't forget, we'll be going into our Bible lesson come nine o'clock. We'll be continuing in the book of Romans and we'll be starting here on, at Romans sing chapter 6. I want to send a shout out to Sister Dana W over there in Canada. Pleasant good night to you, Sister Dana W. Come on, say it again. All our Canadian listeners, Sister Janet, Brother Michael, Brother Lex. <laughs> Give me you. Come on, dear. Everything else can wait. Give me you. I hope we're not too late. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Give me you Everything else can wait Lord, give me you Pleasant. Good night to you, my sister. Good night to you. Good evening, Brother Paul. How are you? I'm giving God praise and thanks, my sister. Yeah, I'm listening to you, but I'm not going to be up late with you. It's all right. <laughs> I am not feeling well because I have to go to work tomorrow, so... I just call it to let you know I'm here listening. All right, my sister. God bless my sis. And I hope you're feeling a little better, eh? Huh? I hope you'll be feeling a little better. Yeah. And I'll feel better by tomorrow. All right, my sis. I'll be okay. Okay, my sis. Okay, so you take care. I'm listening. So I'll talk to you later. God bless, sis. God bless. Uh, bye-bye. Mm-hmm. So give me
the Lord I give me you. Just hope I'm not too late. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. So we've come to tell you tonight, be blessed. In fact, just look at three people around you, tell them, be blessed. Be blessed. Be blessed. Ah. Bishop, I was on an airplane on my way to see you. And the Lord began to speak to me and said, write these words as encouragement to the saints around the world. Be blessed, my brother. Be blessed, my sister. Be blessed wherever this life is you. Let me encourage you. Let me speak life to you. You can depend on God to see you through. somebody tonight all of the hurt and the pain that you've gone through God's got an answer for you tonight you, you might, be, might hurt. be hurt you might be crying you might be crying you might be worried you might be worrying and frustrated too let me encourage you let me let me speak Let life me to you. Speak life to you. You can depend on God. See you through. Oh, 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 oh. You can depend, you can depend on, on me, me to pray for you. To pray for you. Oh, I want you to know right now I'm gonna keep on praying. Keep on praying. Yes, we've got to pray for each and every one. Uh, yes, sir. Riding on that airplane that day, my, 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 I my. thought about everything you'd been through. Yes. And everything the people of New Orleans have been through. Oh, we've been through a lot. And I started thinking, what is the solution? I pray for you. I pray for you. God said, tell them to pray. You That's it. Pray for you pray for me. And watch him change watch things. Him. Watch him change things. We'll stand and watch your salvation. Uh, Pray for me. You pray for me. And the body of Christ Why desperately need that prayers. Yes, sir. Uh.
you just get on your lunch break, would you just take a moment out to pray for me? Because I'm going to be praying for you. Yes, the body of Christ needs our prayers. Uh, yes. Now, you know what's going to happen if you pray for somebody around you? Just look at somebody and tell them, I'll pray for you. You pray for me. To be surprised. What's getting ready to happen? Uh, it is no surprise. You know, the things that the Bible speaks about, you know, pertaining to like outside forces attack the body of Christ. It's happening now, you know. You do realize that? Demonic outside forces. Uh, it is attacking the body of Christ. Uh, you can't sit by. Sometimes we're going to fast. But are we fasting for the right thing? Uh, I want my friend Crystal to Yes, come. yes. I'm not against fasting. Uh. The body of Christ is being attacked left, right, and center. I pray for you. And it's becoming you pray for me. more rapid. Watch God change things. Oh, yeah, yeah. Institution out of the body of Christ violates the law of God. You And to add insult to injury. They say that we are the one who are being offensive because we stand on the laws of God. need to go down in serious, serious, uh, serious fasting. A fasting that God calls, yes. Yes, yes, don't forget our Bible reading will be coming up in a few. Much faster. So let us go into this commercial and then we'll get into our Bible reading. In Jesus Christ. If you're in the five boroughs, call us and set up an interview today. Now I'm the Catch these low introductory rates while they last. Call us. Salem Media Network, 347 416 5498. That's Salem Media Network. 347-416-5498. Country meeting. Let me love Kingston. Let me tell you about this place. It's called Richie Rich's Caribbean Taste. Located at 3357 Fish Avenue in the Bronx. When you want a great back home taste, it's Richie Rich's Caribbean Taste. Specializing in Caribbean dishes, you can come in and find a full menu of your favorites like oxtail, curry goat or chicken, stew chicken, and fish just the way you like it. Don't have time to cook for your special occasion or party? We'll let Richie Rich cater for you. Just call 718-708-8431. That's 718-708-8431. Richie Rich's Caribbean Taste, 3357 Fish Avenue in the Bronx, when you want good country cooking. Open 24 hours, 7 days a week. Visit Richie Rich Caribbean Taste in Brooklyn, 1219 Church Avenue. Listen up, don't know what to do with your hair. You want to go natural, but fear being locked into the same old boring style. No more worries. Come to the House of Naturals Hair Show and Dinner Extravaganza. See the elegance and versatility of natural hair. From trendy looks to glamorous color to runway fabulous. Learn how to rock your natural hairstyle. That's the House of Natural Hair Show, April 5th, Macedonia Center, 
Mount Vernon, New York, 8 p.m. A hair show, dinner, and live entertainment by Mighty Mystic, all for just $50. Not to mention a chance to win full service Mr. Luck, a flat screen TV, and much more. Call for tickets today, 917-499-5689. 917-499-5689. Portion, so to go to school. Like they never got to struggle with it, but if you can be real with God. I just say, God, I love you, but there's some days. Call all them reliable, them fast, and them reasonable. So if you have barrels, crates, furniture, cars, containers, and other personal effects to ship to Montego Bay or Kingston, Jamaica, or any other Caribbean island for that matter, Look no further than the shipping company whose name says it all. All right, shipping. They also carry empty barrels and boxes for sale. For quick answers to your quotes, talk to Denzel or Mr. Wright at 718-515-0985 or 347-304-8938. Again, 718-515-0985 or 347-304-8938. Ship with all right, shipping. Trust me. Everything will be all right. Yes, 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 yes. And we will go into our Bible reading right at this moment. I will be taking a lesson from uh, Romans chapter 6. Romans chapter 6. Yes. And uh, we, we completed Romans chapter 5. That was the night before last night and Monday night. But let us just jump back to... Romans chapter 5, verse 19, 20, and uh, 21, and then go into Romans chapter 6. Yes, we just want to um, just give a heads up. Just want to give a heads up and where we are going and where we are coming from. Yes, and in the ending part of Romans chapter 5, it said, For as by one man, as and please, um, I, I will be accepting no calls, so hold off on your calls. No calls while the Bible is reading. Yes, so I'm looking back at Romans chapter 5 where we end um, on Monday night. So we look at it at verse, take it up at verse, verse 19. For as by one man disobedient, one man's disobedient, many were made sinners. That we're speaking about Adam, right? Many were made sinner. The many referred refers when you say the many it refers to all. Yes, all were made sinner. So by the disobedience or so by the obedience of one. Right? And it still means obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. The obedient are the obedience of of Jesus that is speaking of shall many be made righteous many here refers to all who will believe all who will believe yes that is that what this many refers to all who will believe right and it said moreover verse 20 moreover the law entered that the offense might abound. The law of Moses, the law of Moses, that the offense might be identified. The law of Moses coming to being that the offense might be identified. But where sin abound, grace did much more abound. Yes, that is where sin increased, grace super abound and then on top of that grace is more right where sin increase there is more grace grace is abound right that verse 21 that as sin has reigned unto death sin reign as an absolute monarch in the being of the unredeemer yes sin in the, in the life of the unredeemed, the unsaved, sin reigns. Just as like the believer, when you come to Christ, you have that, you, 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 
that sin nature is no more the ruler in the believer's life but the, the, the divine nature takes over from the, from, from the mere fact the believer come to Christ. As we go into chapter 6, we will see what, what it is all about. So it said that as sin reign unto death, right? Even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ. Right? Even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal eternal life by Jesus Christ and it just speaks of everything and when we say everything pertaining to salvation it comes through the cross grace mercy his loving kindness everything is coming through the cross yes grace reigns unto life but it reigns through righteousness because of God's righteous judgment of sin at Calvary executed in the person of his son Jesus Christ hmm? now let us go down to chapter 6 chapter 6 verse 1 what shall we say then that's a question mark right there right shall we continue in sin that grace may abound huh? the question is asked again shall we continue in sin that grace may abound. What is this actually saying? The question is asked. And yes, we can. We can. Can we go and sin? A sin and come back. Seeing that the grace of God, the goodness of God, is there, and it it's there in abundance. It's it's there in abundance. You know, you have some as what we said. You have some people that will tell you, go. You can go sin when you sin. There is grace. The grace of God. God is so good and loving that. You know, yes, everything is all right. Grace is all right, you know. But let me tell you something. Verse 2 said, right? All right. The note said, just because grace is greater than sin, doesn't mean that the believer has a license to sin. Just because grace is greater than, than sin, doesn't mean that the believer has a license to sin. Take that and write it down. Because verse 2 said, God forbid. God is not sanctioning anything pertaining to sin. Just as it was in yesterday, it is the same thing today. And if he didn't sanction the sin, the, the sin that was being committed by his people, right? I don't know why he should sanction sin now. And it's just because grace is abound that doesn't say that the believer should involve and indulge in sin. And many of us find ourselves in that position and are in that category. Yes, because we all we all know that God is a loving God, you know. And but you know something, you know something, huh? And when I really think and think deep into this thing, you see, if my God, who I serve, He knows everything about us, He knows our thought. He knows, when, when we say he knows, even him know our father and our mother long before our father and our mother born. And he knows that we're going to come through that process there. Right? And if he knows that, he knows the end from, the, from, from long before it starts. He knows everything. Now, you look at how simple mankind is. I think about it, you know. You have people. You have people. And I, want, I honestly want somebody to answer me answer me this question here i'm asking a question and i state and i state it's like a statement question then you have christian out there you honestly believe right god knows our heart he sees our heart right and when you go out there and commit a, a commit i transgress against my god right and you come back and you say you're gonna pray about it Right, and if you are not sincere from your heart, do you honestly think that God answered that prayer? Because God knows that you're gonna do that thing the next five times before you really come around. So I, I, that is when I look into it, and that is how I see it. 
Do you think that when you go out there, you see now you come up? Because just through you having this idea, seeing that grace is super abound, you can go out there and sin and come back and ask God for forgiveness and pray and go down on your knee. But God is seeing your heart, you know. And God knows. That is how that is how we hum, we human Christian limit God in a sense that we, we try to put God as how we human being in the capacity of the human race. God is far beyond that because God knows exactly that you're gonna do that sin long before you got saved. He knew that he was gonna transgress and commit an act of transgression against him long before he even get saved. So when you come to him and you go out there and you commit a sin and you know say right you now you don't have a real a penitent heart a heart of repentance. Eh? That is why David when he went and repented he said create in me a clean heart. Right? And a right spirit. Right? Because God knew that that was a repentant heart. But do you think that God answered that prayers when he knew that you're not going to you don't have a really a repentant heart because as you don't pray so and you come out of church the very thing you pray about right you get fall you get fall along the way because mankind is weak so you know I honestly think I just ask a question do you think that God really answered that prayers you know there are a lot of things we do in, in Christendom you know and think that it is alright but let me go on let me go on chapter 2 verse 2 God forbid. God forbid. Right? The first chapter, um, verse 1 said, What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. Right? How shall we who are dead to sin, that is the sin nature, the sin nature, live any longer therein? When the believer come to Christ, or before the believer, God saved. The sin nature is a dominant force in the unbeliever body. Yes, that is why I just read it around here. The sin nature is the dominant force in the unbeliever's body. It is the older. Yes, the older one. Yes. So the young boy that come in now at the, at the time of conversion, now him have a battle for fight, you know. So that is why. It is said here, how shall we, when we got saved, who are dead to sin, right? That is a sin nature. Live any longer therein. This portray what the believer is now in Christ. What the believer now is in Christ, right? No, 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 you not, verse 3, that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ. Plainly says that this baptism is into Christ. This baptism is into Christ, right? And you can see that in 1 Corinthians 1, 17, 1 Corinthians 12, 13, Galatians 3, 27, Ephesians 4, 5, Colossians 2, 11 to 13. And it said, Know you not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. When Christ died on the cross, in the mind of God, we died with him. In other words, he became our substitute and our identification with him in his death gives us all the benefit for which he died. The idea is that he died, he, he did it all for us. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into his death we are buried with him by baptism into his death not only did we die with him but we were buried with him as well that is in the mind of God you know we were buried with him as well which means that all the sin and transgression of the past were buried with him right when we put him in the in the tomb they put all our sin in that tomb as well. Right? That is why it goes up to verse, um, verse 2 and said, How shall we who are dead to sin live any longer therein? The believer, when you come to Christ, you are dead to sin. That is why it said it up here. 
you know we have to go to and from to and from to really get the full understanding that is why it says we are dead we were baptized into his death so we are dead to sin we're buried with him right therefore we are buried with him by baptism into his death that like as christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the father even so we are so shall walk in the newness of light like as christ was raised up from the dead by the holy spirit by the glory of the father even so we the believers when we come to christ even so we also should walk in newness of life we die with him we buried with him and his resurrection was our resurrection to a newness of life how shall we continue then eh? how shall we who are dead to sin hmm? live any longer therein that is a question ask yes the christian who call ourselves christian right and you have to the, pro, the the problem with us is this is the problem we are not submitting ourselves to the working of the holy spirit that dwells in us that is what that is a problem we are not trusting and letting the holy spirit do the work in us and that is why we we we, we slip at times because when we allow the Holy Spirit to be working, the Holy Spirit will lead us in all truth and righteousness. Direct our footsteps and our paths. We have to trust in the Holy Spirit that that is what the Holy Spirit comes in us and uh, dwell in us. That is His work to guide us along because we, without the Holy Spirit, we are weak. We are suspected. We are a suspect, so we are weak. We don't have any strength towards the onslaught of the enemy because you know the sin nature still lives in us you know as, as we go along we will see the sin nature is still in us you know but we cannot make the, 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 the sin the sin nature be our schoolmaster or be the ruler because we are now in christ so it is said that how shall we who are dead to sin we supposed to mortify mortify our deed yes as children of god yeah okay let us go down to verse five for if we have been planted together with christ that is in the likeness of his death right paul proclaims the cross as the instrument through which all blessing come consequently the cross must ever be the object of our faith which give the holy spirit the latitude to work within our life right we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection yes the whole process go down and it go right down to his death his crucifixion his death his burial and his resurrection right and and that is what when we rise with him we it said we rise in a newness of life we rise with a walk or we should walk in a newness of life that is what it said here in verse 4 that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father even so we also should walk in newness of life it's a complete transformation when the child of God or when the, the unredeemed come to accept God is a complete transformation and it's it's something that takes from within and it, it starts from within and then it starts to develop on the outside so we cannot continue to abide in sin when we say what was it that we saved from let me ask a question if we say we are saved the word save we must have been saved from something I, 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 unless I have it wrong unless I'm having it wrong and I know the Holy Spirit that leading me the wrong way I know that we must have been saved from something we can't say we're saved 
how how on earth we gonna say we save? Save, yes, but save from what? Huh? How can you tell me that? All right, I'll, I'd love to ask this question. How can you say that? Somebody, I oftentimes I hear it, I hear it on many, many programs. I listen to Jimmy Swaggart, I listen to a lot of programs, a lot of Christian programs. Because, you know, that my time right now is not taken up with nothing too tough of the world. More than I might listen to news, current event, and such a, the such a life. But every aspect of my life is something about God, something about God, something about God, constantly thinking about Him. That is where the level I reach. Yes room for no man constantly thinking about god and i often listen to all the various programs and i hear people said you know they will write in i am bound by alcohol you know and i got saved five years ago now that kind of boggle my mind that kind of chip something out inside of me what what i mean you know i don't get angry or so, but it kind of put me in deep thought because if I said I am saved, right? Right? That mean our Jesus saved me or whatever it is. That mean I am saved from something. And that it do not work out that I'm saved. I am saved from sin. I, 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 I was not saved in sin. I was saved from. That means it becomes no more a part of me sin is no more a part of me so at what level does nicotine i just use nicotine and alcohol for an example at what level does nicotine and alcohol while you consume it is no more sin is no more at what level because if you tell me that person right and said well i've been saved five years ago right and i still smoke right and what have you and the moderator or whosoever is running that program you know will come to the conclusion that that person is still safe but he's bound by such and such a thing i agree there, there somebody can be bound yes by the working of the devil but this is the part I don't understand. It's not that I, 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 I don't I read the Bible. It's not everything I understand. Well, because you have other ministers who will, the, the Holy Spirit will reveal it to them while the Holy Spirit will hold it back for me for a time. Yes. What the Holy Spirit will reveal to Sister Jane down there, sir. You, the pastor and the pulpit, have, have not seen it. Yeah. So maybe there is something that is revealed to that. How comes this person? Who is still smoking said that him save? Who is still drinking and said up him save? Because in, in my uh, my theology tell me that well, the person is saved and him saved from all these things. Once you put your trust in God and you sincerely ask God to deliver you from this demonic stronghold in your life, I think it will it will God will. I shouldn't think. God, when you think, it's like you're bucking a toe. God will deliver you if you are sincere and if you want to be delivered. You know? And that is my contention. Because, all right, I, 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 maybe I'm wrong here too. Maybe I'm wrong here because before I come to Christ, I used to do all of these things. I used to smoke weed. And I used to tell myself, so I can't stop smoke weed. Right? And no matter how you say the time, cool outside. Or it's cool outside and thing. I gone outside and I make like a scliff and me roll it and me outside, drink my coffee and smoke. And it reaches stage. I smoke cigarette. Well, I wasn't all that uh, uh, alcohol person. I used to drink one and two, but I'm not that alcoholic or uh, uh, alcohol person. And when I become a Christian, right? And the Holy Spirit starts to deal with me. All of these things, I had, that, I had, I had that, that urge no more. I have no urge for those things anymore. It was just bam. It was, it just, it just leave me like, like how the night and the day, like how the night and the day separate. It just leave me, bam. You know, because I depend on the, and I didn't know anything about the Holy Spirit back then, but I just asked God. 
to help me. There are other things which I wouldn't be able to talk here now that was affecting my life as a Christian. Yes, there were other things. I mean, when you're a young Christian, you just got saved. You're coming out of a world where woman was like, you know, nothing like in that sense, you know. You have woman here, there, and, uh, you know. And when you, be, when you got saved, you know, you struggle, you will struggle with these things for a while. But once you're sincere, you ask God to help you. Yes, God will come in and help you. And help you the right time to. And you don't go on too long in this era. But when somebody said, I saved 10 years and they're still struggling with alcohol and cigarette, it kind of baffled my mind. Are they depending solely on God to help them? Are they sincere in getting help from the Holy Spirit? Because if, the Holy, if your body is a temple of God, which many of you are still doing it now, you know, many of you, right? And if you are not realizing that when you become a child of God, your body becomes, your body is not yours anymore. Your body is the temple of God. So why is it? The body is the temple of God. That is where the Holy Spirit resides now. Why is it that they try to desecrate the temple of God? By consuming alcohol, by having illicit sex, by, by smoking, by taking all form of drugs, and by doing a lot of things that is contrary to the law of God. Why is it? Because the body is the temple of God. I, am, I, I, I don't know if I'm having something right here. But let me go on for the time being because it will prove, it will prove my theory. Because just by reading God's word, it shows you all of these things. And not that, don't go with the impression that you better Paul are going like a perfect. No, that is not what it is. The idea is that you are to ask the Holy Spirit to help you. And that is what I'm trying to put to you. Right? It's asking for help from the Holy Spirit because none of us is capable enough of doing the work what the Holy Spirit, that God sent the Holy Spirit to do. And that is exactly what the Holy Spirit is here to do, to help us and to keep us and to live a holy life, a pleasing life unto God. So if you as a Christian criticize me and said, me go and like me perfect, no, that is not the point. That is not the point. Because none of us is perfect. But according to the word of God, we are to live according to what the word of God is saying. And why is it that some of us get on like that? And why is it that some of you, you know, bad mouth me? It's because they're not reading the Bible. It's because they're not reading the Bible. Some of us, you take up your time by running come home and rather to watch reality TV than to spend one hour reading a Bible. And you will watch reality TV until you're ready to go to sleep. Right? Without taking up your Bible for an hour. And the only time the Bible is your hand is when you go to church. Right? And still, what is being said in church, you don't understand it. And yes, still they say you are filled with the Holy Spirit with the evidence and speaking in tongue. Something is wrong somewhere along the line. And that is what I'm trying to figure out. What is happening in the body of Christ? And the Holy Spirit, I, I know the Holy Spirit is going to help me with it too. Yes, and He's going to reveal it to me. Yes. So let me go on, right? Verse 6, knowing this, I was saying, I was at verse 5. I didn't remember if I finished reading verse 5. For if we have been planted together, right, in the likeness of his death, that is with Christ, right? Paul proclaims the cross as the instrument through which all blessing comes, right? We shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection, right? Yes. We can have the likeness of his resurrection. Example, live this resurrection life only as long as we understand the likeness of the death, of his death, right? Which refers to the cross as the means in which all of this is done. Verse 6, knowing this, that our Lord, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that is the sin nature, right? Or the sinful nature. All that we were before 
conversion. Right? That the body of sin might be destroyed. That the body of sin might be destroyed. You see that word might? Huh? You see that word might? It is very significant. Right? Because God knows that in not all of us, the body of sin is destroyed in our body. Yes. That's why that word there, might, the world is put, put might, might be destroyed. That henceforth we should not serve sin. A lot of us is still serving sin. That's why the word might is there. Do you understand? Because some of us don't reach this level yet. And that's why some of you say, you're going like a too perfect brother Paul, but it's not that. And I'm coming down the line. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him. Knowing enough. That means if you don't have a knowledge of what Jesus did at the cross, what a knowledge of what is the sin nature and a knowledge of the divine nature. We're not going to understand what we are saying here. So the knowledge of knowing what it is that he went to the cross and did, right? And take care of. And the knowledge that you know, so knowing this, you know this, that the old man is crucified with him. All that we were before conversion, and that is our sinful character. That is all that we were before conversion. We were a sinful set of people. Yeah, excuse me. It said that henceforth we should not serve sin. The guilt of sin is removed at conversion because the sin nature no longer rules within our hearts and life. So there, there, that is an S factor, the heart, right? And we're not speaking about the one that pumps blood around the body. That, 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 that is not the heart we're talking about, right? We're speaking about the heart where the soul and the spirit, right? And where sin originates in the human body. That is what we're speaking about, right? For he, verse 7, and if you're just joining me, I am at Romans chapter 6, and I'm at verse 7. Romans chapter 6, verse 7. For he who is dead, right? He was our substitute, and in the mind of God we died with him upon believe in faith so it said for he who is dead is free from sin set free from the bondage of the sin nature come on now that that is why i keep ask i ask that question what is it that we are saved from right and if we are saved then why is it that as a christian we find ourselves indulged in things are we not walking according to all the prescribed order of God? Hmm? Why? Something is not right. Is it that you're not getting the proper teaching to understand what it is and how to walk with God? Huh? Instead of trivializing the word of God and making it, and, and, and it's like that is non effect. We, we, we've, we must read it, and I'm going to show you, you now. I, I tell you, I tell you, I can tell you, I can turn to John, 1st John chapter 1 and show you, verse 26 or 27 and show you. Each and every one of us, please, please listen to me. Get to love your Bible and read, start to read the Bible. Set a time of, you can't, you can't set one, say I'm going to do one like a five minutes and read the Bible and things say, you understand anything about reading. You, 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 God see your heart, you know. So don't worry, things say I go spend 15 minutes in the Bible and tell, well, you read the Bible. You, that is flesh. That is flesh in motion. Because God see heart and God see that well, you read in the Bible. How much do you, you know, you know, it baffles my mind to hear some people say they read the Bible in a one year. Yes. It's impossible. You're not, you can't read the Bible in a one year. But what do you understand? What is the understanding? You just read the Bible in a one year to what? For both. Trust me. 
it takes us for, for this right here Romans chapter 6 or anywhere in the Bible eh? if you have a serious to sit down and read it it takes you hours to really negotiate and understand what is being said to you hours it bothers my mind when me hear people say they read the Bible in one ear do they understand what they are reading about that is the whole point. That's why it baffled my mind. For he who is dead, verse 7, right, is free from sin. Set free from sin. For he who is dead, right? Remember, you know, the, the over here, sir. How shall, at verse 2, how shall, God forbid, how shall we who are dead to sin live any longer therein? The word of God cannot contradict itself. It is telling us here at verse 7, for he who is dead, when the believer comes to Christ, you are dead to the sin nature. Because it said so in verse 2. And verse 3 said, For you know not that so many of us, as were baptized into Jesus, were baptized into his death. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into his death, that like as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life. Right? For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. Right? Come back to verse 7. It said, For he who is dead is freed from sin. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we, we the believer, if we dead with Christ, once again pertains to the cross and our being baptized into his death, we believe that we shall also live with him. Glory to God. Know that we are living with Christ. We are living with Christ. Eh? We believe that we shall also live with him. Have a re resurrection life which is more abundant life. You find that in John 10, 10. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dies no more. Means that his work was a finished work and will require nothing else. Death has no more dominion over him because all sin has been atoned in as much as Christ is our substitute. If death has no more dominion over him, it has no more dominion over us. This means that the power of the sin nature is broken because the wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death. So the power of the sin nature Although the sin nature is still reside in our body, we will not get rid of that sin nature until when the Lord return for the church. When the Lord return for the church, then those who are dead, right, in Christ will rise and get a glorified body. That is when a new body, a glorified body that is like of Christ. That body will be like Christ's one. So the free of sin. That is when we're going to get rid of the sin nature. The sinful. Because it's still in the body. But as what it said. It should not let it rule. Should not let it rule. As we go down we will see what we are talking about. Okay. Verse 9. Knowing that. Christ being raised from the dead. Dies no more. Death has no more dominion over him. Verse 10. For in that he died, he died unto sin. Just like the believer. Yes, we died unto sin too. Right? In that he died, he died unto sin once. That is the sin nature. Actually mean he died unto the sin nature once and for all. But in that he lives the resurrection. He lives unto God. It refers to the fact that all life comes from God. And that we receive that life by virtue of the cross and our faith in that finished work. We have a new life. Now that we are in Christ. That all, everything, uh, that everything that, that, that was before is gone. Gone, gone. Right? Verse 12. Verse 12 deal with sanctification. Right? It said, let not sin, the sin nature... Therefore, reign in your mortal body. This is the word of God. It said, let not sin. That is the sin nature. 
who still lives in the body, right? But it's saying that let not that sin nature therefore reign, that is rule. The word reign means rule in your mortal body right here. That's what it means. In your rule your mortal body. Showing that the sin nature can once again rule in the heart and life of the believer. If the believer does not constantly look to Christ and the cross, the mortal body is neutral. Hmm? Which means it can be used for righteousness as well as unrighteousness. Right? The mortal body is neutral. Right? So the word of God said that you should obey it in the lust thereof. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in the lust thereof. Ungodly lusts are carried out through the mortal body if faith is not maintained in Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Maintain is not a one time thing, it is a constant, constant, every day, every minute, every second, the clock tick. The Christian must walk in God, in Christ. It's not just when I go to church on the morning and get holy. When I go to church Saturday, holy and all. And after that, everything break up and break away. It is a constant, it is, it is a relationship. Christianity is a relationship. It's not a philosophy. It is a relationship. Relationship we do with God. Right? How can you know that you have a relationship with God? And every now and then. He's there with you, you know, but every now and then you visit him. You're not seeing him, but he is there. And he's looking at you. Don't you think he'll make his heart sad to know that you who he loves so much? Eh? I just read it over there. If he can give his life for the sinners, much as we who are serving him, what is it? Don't you see how much we hurt his heart? Yes. We hurt his heart. Because if you are not walking with God a minutely, second basis, something is wrong with your life as a Christian. Something is wrong with him. Your everyday being, your thought, your mind, your everything supposed to be about God. Nothing else supposed to be on your mind. I mean, Yes, you have rent for pay, God will provide. You have schools, children for the, God will provide. You just have to trust God, right? And ask God to work things for you. Because in the same sense, things is working for you and you're not trusting in him. What, what much less you gonna do when you start trusting in him? Eh? Because we feel that, right? Not seeing God, he's not there for us. So we have to take up things in our hand and do things. But with the direction of the Holy Spirit, it would be a different thing. Verse 13 said, right? Neither yield you your members, your members as instrument of unrighteousness unto sin. Okay? Neither yield you your members. I just said it a while ago. Your hands, two eyes, and what have you. You should be thinking minutely. You have to be careful even when you look. As a man and as a Christian, Christian young man out there, yeah, the challenge is up to you. The challenge is on you because you have some woman buy them out of the road and dress somewhere. And not only out of the road, all about when you go, you see them, right? You have to be careful with your eye because what the eye see, then things can see within. Yeah? Yes? So you have to be careful where you even look. Sometimes you see it and you just have to just take a Quick take off, look and move. Because you see it coming front of your appear, so you have to just say, Lord, help me. And try to move on. Ye not your members, God. It says it in the word of God. Neither or neither yield you your members as instruments of unrighteousness. That is speaking of the body, the body part. Right? as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin. That is the sin nature. Because remember the old man still in a way now. 
are the old man still reside in us. Yes, that is the sin nature. As what we say, you can't make him raise him ugly head now because the divine nature is ruling now. So you cannot let that old man raise him head. The divine nature, if I allow the divine nature to take that man, conk him. Keep down. Stay down. But yield yourself unto God. Yield yourself unto God. This is not a one day substance that when you get saved, you throw in the towel and you sit down and you relax down because you say you're safe. God, you're under the protection of God. And no battle are going, and the daughter go go towards you. You have to constant, you are constantly on the battlefield. You know? So you have to constantly walk with God. But yield yourself unto God. We are to yield ourselves to Christ and the cross. That alone guarantees victory over the sin nature. As those who are alive from the dead, we have been raised with Christ in newness of life. And your members as instrument of righteousness unto God. So all we do, we are doing, we have to do it as we, we use our members as righteousness. As instruments of righteousness unto God. Right? This can be done only by virtue of our faith in Christ Jesus and him crucified for sin here is it so all you look at me and say me go on like me perfect the word of God says for sin shall not have dominion over us it said in the word of God you right but I'm including myself because I trust in what God is saying to me so it says here because some of you don't know this is in the Bible for sin shall not have dominion over us, we the believers. Sin shall not have, verse 14 says so, shall not, shall not. It is a done deal, close, put up and put down. Sin shall not have dominion over us. Right? The sin nature will not have dominion over us if we as believers continue to exercise faith in the finished work of Christ. Otherwise, the sin nature most definitely will have dominion over the believer. For you are not under the law means that if we try to live this life by any type of law, no matter how good that law might be, in its own right, we, we will conclude by the sin nature having dominion over us. Whether it be church law or what? right but we are under grace the grace of God flows to the believer on an unending basis only as long as a believer exercises faith in Christ so don't come tell me that seeing that grace is abound you can go there and sin the Bible don't teach us that so any preacher tell you says alright right grace is abound you can come back yes but the heart, God is seeing that heart. The preacher can't see your heart. So him can't tell you garbage. Right? And that is a lie coming out of the pit of hell. When somebody say, yeah, go out and go sin. Now, you're a Christian. You're a Christ no, you, you're, you're, not, you're not ready yet. You know you're not ready yet. You don't reach that, you don't reach that stage yet. You're not even a babe sucking milk. Or drinking milk. You need to go dip in the blood of Jesus Christ. You need to go dip, I mean, in the blood of Jesus. And come again. And humble yourself. Under divine power and spiritual authority. Yes, that's what you need to do. What then? Verse 15. Shall we sin because we are not under the law but under grace? You see, you see how many times this come back to us? Eh? Eh? It's three times, you know. It's three times, one at verse one, right? And at some time there in the middle, and now we we'll come back to it here. So, what then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law but under grace is a question being asked. God forbid. God not going to sanction. It, you so much time it come. In a chapter 6. Three times. Right? If we think that such a thing. That 
if we think such a thing, then we are completely mis misunderstanding grace. The grace of God gives us, listen to this, the grace of God gives us the liberty to live a holy life. That is why I said, what that anybody tell any preacher who read this and tell us says, all right, man, right? True grace abound. Good. Everything all right. It is a lie coming out of the pit of hell. Get your Bible and read for yourself. And ask God to let the Holy Spirit open your mind, give you wisdom and understanding. And furthermore, by yourself, a study Bible. Get yourself a study by every Christian, every minister, every preacher, each one, Jack, he, she, and the lady. Supposed to have a study Bible. Bar none. No matter how much theological and how much degree you have behind a name. Because someone who go to theological college and still don't know. Because your mind is being warped. They're teaching you some things in a theological college that it, it, it blow your mind. Let me get, I don't want to go no further in that. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law but under grace? If we think, or if we think such a thing, then we are completely misunderstanding what the meaning of grace is. The grace of God gives us the liberty to live a holy life, which we do, which we do through faith in Christ and the cross. And not license to sin as some think. Because it said, God forbid. Hmm? God forbid. Hmm? Know you not. Verse 16. Every true believer hates sin. So the idea of living on its dominion is abhorrent to say the least okay know you not that to whom you yield yourself servant to obey hmm? that is asking do you do, do, don't you know that whosoever you yield yourself servant to obey you automatically you automatically becomes his servant you are to whom you obey. All right. Know you not that to whom you yield yourself, servant to obey. His servant you are to whom you obey. Of course, if you yield yourself to the sin nature, you're going to become a slave to the sin nature. And that is what, you know that, as, as what we say, alcohol, nicotine, you know, sexual immor immorality, pornography, child sex thing and everything. You know, you have Christian deeply involved. I, I, I don't want, I don't know if I could say Christian. You have people who said they save. And the word save again is, I don't know if I should use that. Because if you save, you save from sin, not in sin. But you have people who go around and call themselves Christian still bound by these things still wrapped up high in these things right and ministers too man who man of the cloth let me say that yes abusing their wife verbally and physically yes holy per christian man sit down in a church abuse them wife both physically and verbally Huh? If some wife ever come out and talk to man, there will not enough paper and ink for write it with some of these Christian men. I am not particularly talking about the ministers them. I'm speaking about Christian men. Have so much disdain for women, so much disrespect for women. It's worse than the men them in the secular world. Christian men. Yes. Horrible thought about our lady folks our women folks disrespect them some of you have your wife and you're still beating up on another wife 
For what? Eh? It is your shortcoming while you're beating up on your wife? It got to be your shortcoming. And you say, yeah, Christian, something is wrong there. I am missing, I am missing some point. Eh? Something is wrong. Hmm? Once you have the Holy Spirit in you, all the fruit that the Holy Spirit said you should have, that the Holy Spirit gives unto us, that should be a part of our life. And if you tell me that when you come in and you abuse your wife verbally, because some of, some of you talk down to no wife, man, I know it. I, look, I don't listen. I, I don't even read the Bible alone. You know, I listen. To, I gear myself and listen to program that women will come on and talk and program the abuse they are getting from their husband, who who is some minister or some of them well sit in the pew. They speak about it. These are testimony I hear. If, if I'm to play tape, or if I'm to, you know, I have tape can play, but I'm not gonna play it on the radio because it would be it it would be, it will be a disgrace, huh? Right now, I don't know if any of you read the recent hype. I was about to call man of God Bishop and ask him if I could read it on the radio, but I'm not gonna read nothing on the radio because I have to get permission. But the latest um, edition of the type, the Hype magazine, I think it's a free issue magazine, where there is a big minister being spread on the page of what he did. But the point, that, the point, the, the part that really hurt me, that hurt me. But the point that hurt me more is when you go to the editorial, and I trust that the, the, the editor for the editorial is not a Christian. And what he's writing there about the church, taking it from off the front page story about this particular minister. Right? But I have to get permission before I, I, I can ever read it on the radio. I won't be reading it on the radio. But if you and the church sit so quiet, the church, the, you see the church in Bronx? Huh? The church here in Bronx, and I mean the church in Bronx, God help us here. A very few church in Bronx, a very few, that is doing the work of God. And I, and I make no apology. A very few. The wrath of God going to pour on many of the churches here in Bronx. And I can bet many of you going fasting for that brother there too. And no doubt about it. Is that a fast that God called you want me to show you in Isaiah? The fast that God need from you all? You want me to show you? Is that the fast that God want? And I can bet money on you. You're going to fasting. Fasting for what? Huh? For a nasty piece of beastly act that you have done? Not only one but two times? The church need waking up. Especially the body of Christ here in Bronx. What then? Shall we sin? Because we are not under the law but under grace. God not tolerating sin. He said, God forbid. Know you not that to whom you yield yourself, servant obey. His servant you are to whom you obey. Yes, that is what happened. Whether of sin unto death or of, or of obedience unto righteousness, that is the only way God will recognize you when you heal yourself unto righteousness, obedience unto righteousness. The believer is required to obey the word of the Lord. You are required to obey the word of the Lord, not the word of the preacher. Our word of man, the word of the Lord, and the word of the Lord is in his holy book. In his holy book. And I mean his holy book, the King James Version. And I'm not making no apology with that either. This holy book. He cannot do that which is his own strength. 
but only by understanding that he received all things through what Christ did at the cross and 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 and, and his continued faith in that finished work even on a daily basis i am not misleading you if the holy spirit can tell many men it's not only one man is telling us many men right on a daily basis minutely by the second then the holy spirit who alone can make us what we ought to be and uh, can can accomplish his work within our life it is the holy spirit not we cannot do it brothers and sisters don't if you're doing it stop it because you're doing it yeah yeah you are uh, you are operating under the flesh ask the lord to give you that understanding it is nothing for him if he said if you ask him it is nothing for him to give his children whatever you ask him for once it is in his will ask the lord he is real he is real he is real he is real you're not seeing him but he is real by faith by faith yes Abraham had faith in the thing that was promised to him he knew he, there was gonna be a redeemer although he knew that he was gonna live to see it and that faith he had or he has it was justified unto him for righteousness Now we, 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 we also have a promise and we also get a promise and if we don't maintain the faith that we're supposed to be maintaining and that faith is in Jesus Christ and him crucified hmm? then we're going to find ourselves in the red okay let us go on All right verse 17 but God be thank that you were the servant of sin. That means you were a slave to sin nature or a slave to the sin nature. What we were before we were saved. God be thank that you were the servant of sin. But you have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine. Jesus Christ and him crucified understanding that all things come to the believer from God by the means of a cross but you have obeyed from the heart you see where conversion take place huh some other some other people have it different but conversion take place from the heart the heart and that is why we have so many wrongs in the church because we think that salvation is otherwise yes salvation come from the heart we obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you the lord gave this form of doctrine to brother paul and he gave it to us in his epistle well, I always keep saying that you know, read Acts chapter 8 or 9 I think I think it's Acts chapter 9 when he was on his road this road to Damascus to go persecute and persecute and bound the Christians who were serving God hmm? and that's when he get boxed down yes that's when he get back down. So Paul is a chosen brother and he got this message. The message, the foundation of Jesus Christ and him crucified. Right? Go over there in Acts and read it. Acts chapter 9, I think. If it's not 9, it's chapter 8. Right? Being then made free from sin. Being made. Being then made free 
from sin. This is no ordinary thing, you know. This is a very important thing in our life, you know. Because it takes divine power to make us free from sin. A man effort cannot do it. I, want, I, I hope you realize that. Being then made free from sin. Right? Being made free from the sin nature, it has no more power over the believer. But only as we continue to look to the cross. Right? We made free from sin and that is divine power that is that mean it is supposed to have the power over the believer once we have our faith in the proper object right being made free from sin you became the servant of righteousness okay you became the servants of righteousness so I am not only a servant of righteousness all who being made free from sin by the blood of Jesus Christ that is there is no other way you can be free from sin except through by the blood of Jesus right then sin will have no more power over the believer's life because it says so you became the servant you became we became a slave to righteousness that is the point. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of our flesh. It said your flesh here. But I have to include myself. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. The manner of men pertains to the fall which was made, which has made the flesh weak. They speak of our own personal strength and ability. That is why I go back to the theory that we cannot. For we to be victorious and walk and live a victorious life. Our faith and strength and everything have to be constantly in Jesus Christ. And allowing the Holy Spirit to do the work in our life. Once, once, once you give the adversary, one, I, can, I can work it down in fraction. A little space because the word of God says a little teeny teeny bit of leaven leaven the whole lump. Think about it. A small little once it once it does pass and the dust of that leaven hmm, catch the lump. That means it spoiled the whole thing. And that is why in the body of Christ has so many the four wall brick and mortar building you have so many sick people because of false doctrine one little leaven a little bit of leaven left at the whole lump and one little mis misleading at the word of God it spoiled the whole church and I've oftentimes seen that since I do, do serious study in my Bible, oftentimes I've seen that the whole entire church slipping on a banana peel right to hell because of what? The pastor is misleading them. You know, you, you, you just start to serve God. You don't know nothing about that. Yes. I speak after the man of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. For you have yielded your member servant to uncleanness. Because of the weakness of our flesh. But Paul is saying he speak after the manner of men. Because of the infirmity of your flesh. For you. For as you have yielded your member servant to uncleanness. And to iniquity unto iniquity huh that means with our constant faith in the cross the believer situation regarding sin will get worse and worse that's what it means iniquity unto iniquity worse and worse even so now yield you I yield your member servant to righteousness and to holiness the word of God says 
you are to yield and constantly do so, which is repeatedly stated, can only be done to constant faith in what Jesus Christ did at the cross. Understanding that it is by and through the cross that we receive all things and that the Holy Spirit who alone can develop righteousness and holiness in our life works exclusively through the cross. You think about it. The cross is not a new message. It, it, no, 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 no. Don't let them fool it. The cross is from, from Genesis. From Genesis start. Yes. It's nothing new. It is because they have failed to preach the cross. The message of the cross in the church. They failed to do so. And they lack the understanding. But when you read Genesis and go right through. Coming down. You will see what, what I'm speaking about. The sacrifices is pointing to the shed blood of Jesus. And we're speaking about the cross here now. The cross is about the shed blood of Jesus. Shedding his blood to redeem mankind. Glory to God. For when we were the servants of sin, you were free from righteousness. Come on now. When we were slaves to sin, those who are in the secular world, come on now. Would you honestly think they are righteous? <laughs> come on, see. brothers and sisters. That's what this meaning is. I'm not saying it. I am just amplifying the word of God. Just by reading the word. I'll let you understand. Because the Holy Spirit has given me an instrument in my hand. The Holy Spirit gave me a tool in my hand. And tell me to read it. And it opened my understanding and my wisdom. The capacity to understand and explain these things to me. So this is why, you know, I, there are many of you who don't understand even when they read it. For you, were, for you, for when you were the servant of sin, you were free from righteousness. Many of us don't understand that. But, you know, it is saying that, right? Those who in the secular don't have any, don't care for anything about God. Until when little water catches seed that is in that heart. The Holy Ghost water. The Holy Spirit. That water. And by the preaching of a minister's day. That's why I said, most of you ministers fail big time on New Year's Eve night. Most of you. You might be wondering and say, boy, you know this brother is not easy enough. But I'm, not, I'm making no apology either. Most of you ministers fail God big time New Year's Eve night. Because that is when most of the secular people coming into church. New Year's Eve. And imagine, eh? you know, don't make use of it. How many souls win on New Year's Eve then? Hmm? Most of you. I don't say, I don't say all in, I said most. Most of you. And what is it? For filthy low cree. Your mind is set on filthy low cree. That you don't do the work of God properly. And on a field, big time, I miss big time. New Year's Eve night. When the church pack as sinners more than the one that are saved. And the one that are saved, instead then catch the sinners and push them up front. And then go back and sit down. Then all of them stand up in front, they do the one them save. And take the best seat. You know, I mean, come just zip up your mouth and go read the word of God you uh, <laughs> but when you were the servant of sin those who are in the secular world are uh, when we were in the secular world then right we had no zest for righteousness so it said that you were free from righteousness that is what the word of God saying here we were free from righteousness when I was in there Walking miracles split here and there. What they were when we know about righteousness, Papa. We are telling about righteousness, ma. All my mind upon is that make the police come catch me. I smoke no, no, no weed and it, something. There. So when you were in the when you were the servant of sin, right? You were free from righteousness, that's what it means. Speaking of our life before conversion to Christ. 
What fruit had you then in those things? Nothing. Nothing. What fruit have you then in those things whereof you are now ashamed? Eh? For the end of those things is death. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of life, the gift of Christ is. Yes. The word of God can't go wrong and it can't contradict itself. What fruit had you then in those things whereof you are no ashamed? This means that absolutely nothing of any value can come out of a sinful experience. You tell me. Tell me what, what value that, that came out of your life before conversion. It is impossible for there to be any good fruit. Christ said, for the end of those things is death. If the believer refused to look to the cross, but rather look to something else regarding his sanctification, domination by the sin nature is going to be the result. And spiritual death will be this conclusion. The cross is the only answer for sin. And that is where sin was addressed. Nowhere else. No, are, you don't believe me. All right, let us look here at Acts. Let us look something here in Acts. Let us look at something here in Acts. Okay. Acts chapter. Acts chapter what? Twelve, I think. Is it Acts chapter twelve, brother Paul? I think so. Hmm. Acts chapter 12, no. No, it's not Acts chapter 12. Okay, I soon get it. We're going to look to something here. Right? Because there is nothing. Nothing here. Can man safely say, Right? Acts chapter 4, verse 12. Look at it for me in a moment. I, don't, I trust that you don't get tired of me. As what it is saying here, over here in Romans, right? That the only way sin can be addressed, the only way sin can be addressed is through Jesus Christ and Him crucified. And that is the cross. That is the place where sin was addressed. Right? Nothing else. Nothing else. Nowhere else can sin be addressed. Look at Acts chapter 4 verse 12. Neither and neither is there salvation in any other. Neither there is salvation is there salvation in any other for there is none other name on the heaven now listen to me stop a moment don't go any further whatever you think is, is on the heaven from the galaxy come right down included earth is on the heaven now the word of God said there is none for there is none other name on the heaven so you name anything that is on earth here. Given among men, that, was, that is earth then. We come right to earth. Um, it's the only place that man is living right now. Right? Whereby we must be saved. So we come right to earth here. You name anything upon earth. And tell me that this thing here make your arm um, wash your sin or make you save or anything. The word of God says it. It is quite obvious there is none other name under heaven given among men where men occupy earth because they don't occupy nowhere else but earth whereby we must be saved whereby we must be saved Whereby we must be safe. Right? 
I um somebody just text me um the cross from Genesis coming right back down. It 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 the the cross is being from Genesis coming right down to the New Testament. The cross is a symbol coming right down in the Old Testament. You can see where Jesus, where the shedding of the blood, the shedding of blood, the building of the altar. The altar is a is a symbol of the cross. Yes, the altar is a symbol of the cross. Even when Abraham was going to slay his son, that is a symbol of Jesus Christ dying on the cross too, and coming all along down the line. All those sacrifices is a symbol of Jesus Christ dying on the cross. The lamb, all the lamb that were given up in sacrifice is a symbol of Jesus Christ dying on the cross. That is what I'm, I, I meant by the cross. Right? And now let us go on here. There is no other name given among men whereby we can be saved unhurt here is only the shed blood of Jesus Christ and him crucified and the cross is where all sin was addressed or is addressed but now being made free from sin that means set free from sin from the sin nature and become servants that means slaves to God right right but this yoke is the light is a light yoke you have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life so the believer has the choice of death which is the end result of trusting something other than Christ and the cross our everlasting life which is the result of trusting Christ and him crucified for the wages of sin is death speak of spiritual death which is separation from God but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord has stated all of this without exception come to us by the means of what Christ did at Calvary which demands that the cross ever be the object of our faith Thus giving the Holy Spirit the latitude to work within our life and bring forth his fruit. Yes, and just taking a break for a minute or two and take a look into chapter 7.
you have to do is ride out your storm. You've been in the storm. Seems like forever. Nights of confusion have been so long. Your ship has lost anchor. The storm's got you drifting Your night's almost over You can ride out your storm Ride out your storm
Yes, yes, yes. Wanna say a pleasant good night, good night to each and every one, wherever you are. Yes, yes, yes. And as as I was looking here in Romans chapter six, and so I just got a text from you know some listeners, and they were just, or they just want to know um, about the cross. Speaks about the cross in um, Genesis. But when you read carefully and look at all the sacrifices that was being offered from Genesis come right around, right? On the altar that they built, what they call the altar and the burnt offering and such like. It is a symbol of Christ and a symbol of the cross because even Abraham, when he went to sacrifice Isaac, Isaac was a type of Jesus, you know? Yes. Isaac was a type of Jesus because when, when he went up there, right, and God called out to him and said him, there was a lamb in the bush, right? Now the lamb signified Jesus and, and all those sacrifices that, that, that occur, it, it, it was pointing to the cross. You know, it's just for us to understand and look closely and all of these things, right? And I, I, um, I have, I have your um, question and answer book from Brother Sagwa. And when you look at these things, you know, these are some very important questions. You know, and I have this book. I've taken this here from the book, Question and Answer by Brother Sagwa, Swaga, right? And he said, "Is the cross of Christ?" the most important part of the plan of God? And the answer is yes. While anything and everything done by the Lord Jesus Christ is of uttermost significance and thereby played its part in this great redemption plan, irrespective as to what it might have been, still the cross of Christ is by far the pivoted, the pivotal 
the pivotal part around which everything else revolves. How do we know that? We know that it is the most important part, simple, because the cross of Christ is the foundation on which everything else is built regarding this great plan of God. It was the first thing formulated It was the first thing formulated in the mind of God in the mind of the Godhead making it the foundation. The Holy Spirit through Simon Peter said this and I quote directly from the Expositor Study Bible which I have one also. The precious blood of Christ for as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corrupt, corruptible things as silver and gold, okay? This presents the fact that most precious commodities, silver and gold, could not redeem fallen man. And it said, from your vain conversation, that is your lifestyle, vain lifestyle, received by tradition from your fathers, speaks of original sin that is passed on from father to child at conception but it said but with the precious blood of christ presents the payment which proclaims the poured out life of christ on behalf of sinners as of a lamb without blemish and without spot now let us go back over into the old testament Whenever there was going to be a sacrifice, what was the, the main criteria we supposed to do? Are they supposed to have done? Bring a lamb, right? That was the one of the main animal they used. A lamb, and it can't have any spot or blemish or anything. So the lamb represents Jesus Christ. The lamb is a representative of Jesus Christ. And it's poured out blood on the altar and the wood and the thing there. It is a cross. So all from Genesis coming right down to in the New Testament. What actually happened in the New Testament? The Old Testament point to the New Testament. And the New Testament point back to the Old Testament. That's all. So it is said, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, speak of the lambs offered as substitute in the old Jewish economy. The death of Christ was not an accident or execution or assassination, but rather a sacrifice. Come on, brother and sisters. If you read and carefully note these things, hmm? You will see all of these things from Genesis come right back to the time of Jesus. Yes, all of it is just a symbol and pointing you to remember. All right, let us let us back up again. Remember when God and Abraham was reasoning. Remember God was reasoning with Abraham, you know, and He made him a promise, you know. What was the promise? The promise, the promise is Jesus. Although Abraham knew that he wasn't going to live to see Jesus in his day, his faith in what God had told him had accounted unto him as righteousness because he knew that Jesus was going to come. Uh -huh. And Jesus was going to come through his lines. Yes. And on top of that, remember Abraham was just reasoned with God. When God tell him, say, all right, your Eliezer, who is the head of your household, not going to be the, benef the, the, the benefactor there. And he said, you easy. I am going to give you a son. And I, I read it over in yonder um, chapter 5 where Abraham did not stagger at the thought at the promise of what God told him because he was he was in his hundred and Sarah was fast approaching a hundred or Sarah was fast approaching a hundred 
So, when God promised them that they were going to have a child, right? The holy word of God said he did not stagger at the promise or the unbelief of, of his wife, Sarah, although she was gone past her childbearing age. Remember, he didn't stagger nothing, you know, but as soon as him, now Satan has been trying from long before, from Eve in the garden to about the process of Jesus coming into the world because Jesus knew that Adam was going to fail. So the second Adam was in place and Satan knew that too. So he was trying from Eve, right, to do such thing. And he come and he do it with Cain and Abel. You just have to think and look and read and see what, is, what the word of God is saying. And he's been trying to do, and as soon as Abraham left from the presence of God, what did Satan do? Him hijack him wife, Sarah, and then tell Sarah to use the handmaid so that Abraham can have a child of his own soul. But that was the planning of the flesh. That was Satan. You have to realize it. Although the Bible is silent right there, yet the Holy Spirit will tell you that that is what Satan was trying to do. Because Ishmael, although he was blessed by God, is still not in the reckoning. It is Isaac. Mm. So when you see all these things coming down the line, and when he carried the boy up in the mountain to give sacrifice. It was a type of Jesus. It was pointing to the cross. And if you don't understand it, well, we can read it and show you. It was pointing to the cross. The shed blood, the lamb, the wood, the wood and the altar. Yes, it was a type of cross and the shed blood. Jesus it was pointing to Jesus. So, yes, let us look at it. I can't figure out what, what is it that you do not understand and I I wish I, I, I wish to you know for you to clear it I don't understand what you're saying you know I don't I don't understand what you're saying what what I'm what I'm, what I'm saying is that the cross has been spoken now from Genesis come right back to the New, the, the New Testament because all those sacrifices that took place, it was a symbol of Jesus Christ going to the cross and shedding his blood. That's all I'm saying. All those sacrifices that from in Genesis coming down the line, Abraham and all those sacrifices, those animals, especially the lamb. And when we speak about lamb, it's a representative of Jesus Christ. Because when John did see him coming, he said, Behold, the lamb of God. So all those lamb that was killed spotless, they could not have any spot or blemish on them. In the Old Testament, under the Jewish economic, right? It represents Christ. That's what I was saying. For as much as you know that in, in Peter here, right? In, in Peter, right? Right? I said here, in, for as much as you know, the Holy Spirit through Simon Peter said this, and I quote, for as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corrupt everything as silver and gold, right? From your vain conversation, that is lifestyle, received by tradition from your fathers.
Yes, yes, yes. I'm so sorry about that. I'm so sorry about that, listeners. And those of you who wanted to know, let, let, let me read over back this, you see? Um, yes, and the, the, the question is, is the, is, the, is the cross of Christ the most important part of the plan of God? And the answer is yes. While anything and everything done by the Lord Jesus Christ is of utmost significance, thereby and thereby played its part in this great redemption plan irrespective as to what it might have been still the cross of christ is by far the pivotal part around which everything else revolves how do we know that we know that it is the most important part simple because the cross of Christ is the foundation on which everything else is built regarding this great plan of God. It was the first thing formulated in the mind of the Godhead, making it the foundation. The Holy Spirit through Simon Peter said this, and I quote, For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things, as silver and gold present the fact that most precious commodities silver and gold could not redeem fallen man from your vain conversation that is your lifestyle received by tradition from your fathers speaks of original sin that is passed from father to child at conception but with the precious blood of Christ present the payment which proclaim the poured out life of Christ on behalf of sinners as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. This speaks of the lamb offered as substitute in the old Jewish economy. Okay? And let me stop here for a moment. And if you can recall, when you go back into Genesis, starting from there, all the sacrifices that were being offered were a symbol of Jesus Christ and the cross. It was, that's all I'm saying. It was, a, it was pointing to, all right, it was pointing to Jesus Christ and the coming of Jesus Christ going to the cross, giving his life shed blood for us sinners. That is all I'm trying to say. So, Every sacrifice that you can think of about in the New Testament concerning the shedding of blood was pointing to or a symbol of Jesus Christ and Him crucified. The altar was a, was a symbol of the cross. Remember, as I said, Abraham, when he was going up on the mountain to sacrifice his son, that was a type of Jesus, that was a type of Christ. Isaac was a type of Christ. He was a type of Christ. The wood on the altar represent the cross. The shed blood is Christ spilling his blood. But there and then, that process did not happen because God provided a lamb and that was also Christ. Behold the lamb of God who take it away the sin of the world. I hope I explain it to you and you understand what, 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 what is being said, you know? Because you're coming over here, it is said here, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, that is Christ Jesus. He was ordained 
before even one blade of grass would make for him to come and give his life for the human being. Because God knew that Adam would fail and fail miserable big time too. So he had in place the second Adam, which is Jesus Christ. Huh? So this refers to the fact that God in his obnis obnisence, omni omniscience, knew he would create man, man would fall, and man would be redeemed by Christ going to the cross. This was all done before the universe was created. This means the cross of Christ is the foundation doctrine of all doctrine, referring to the fact that all doctrine must be built upon that foundation, or else it is spacious. But what, but what, but was manifest in these last times for us that we're speaking about? We jump back. Christ was manifest in these last times. Christ was, and listen, listen. If at that time, 2,000 or many years now, and we classify that as the last time, remember, what time are we in now? I mean, <laughs> close the time now, you know. Look up salvation, draw it nigh. Because, be, look at it, right? But was manifest in these last times, for us, it said for you, but it's me, me and you, for us, for you. That is Christ we're talking about, was manifested in the last, and if that time when Christ was manifested is being categorized as the last time, that means the appointed time is very near and soon too. So we as Christians, we have to look and look up and see what we are doing with our life and consider seriously because anytime the rapture the snatching away the falling away the caught up in the air of the body of Christ the church can happen anytime 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 now because if that they will be described as manifest in these last time for us what say they know okay so it said, who by faith do believe in God? Right? It's only by Christ and what he did for us at the cross that we are able to believe in God. We raise, who raised him, Christ, up from the dead. Right? His resurrection was guaranteed, guaranteed in so much as he atoned for all sin. Romans 6, 23. I just done finished reading that. And gave him glory refers to the exaltation of Christ, that your faith and hope might be in God. This speaks of a heart faith in God, a heart faith in God, who saves sinners in answer to our faith in the resurrected Lord Jesus Christ who died for us. This is taken from 1 Peter 1, 18-21. In this statement given by the Holy Spirit through Peter, we have the following. The cross of Christ as the foundation of the plan of redemption. The cross of Christ addressed in the precious blood of Christ. Right? The resurrection of Christ proclaimed by the fact that God raised him up from the dead. The exaltation of Christ proclaimed by the short phrase and gave him glory understanding that the cross of Christ is the foundation of the great plan of redemption this means that every doctrine must be built upon this foundation it is built on something else if it is built on something else in some way it will be spurious in fact all false doctrine stems from All false doctrine, all false doctrine, in fact, all, all false doctrine stems from a misunderstanding or the ignoring or 
outright denial of the cross of Christ. Once we begin to understand this, then we begin to see how important this message is in so much as it was formulated in the mind of the Godhead from before the foundation of the world. You think about it. All of this was formulated. You see, many of Christians, or many of us, right, as a brother just, just reminding me, right, just reminding me that many of us think that Jesus began from St. Matthew. Jesus Christ as God has no beginning. Uh, he, he has no end. So if you have the thought that Jesus began from Matthew, no. Jesus was before the foundation of the world. Because he is God. So this is why it is said here. Once we begin to understand this, we begin to see how important this message is. Because of lacking of understanding at where Jesus is to where he is now, we don't understand it. Because as what I said a while ago, many of us think that Jesus began from Matthew. You know? As we stated, God who is who is omniscient, omniscient omniscient knew before the foundation of the world that he would make man and that man would fall and it would be deemed desirable by the Godhead that God would become man the man Christ Jesus who would lay aside the expression of his deity while never losing possession of his deity he just lay aside his deity while never losing possession of it while never losing possession of his deity, all for the express purpose of going to the cross of Calvary. <laughs> we just... <laughs> 